allow me to use the, the photo. So hopefully we can uh, do something with this as well. So I shall start the drawing uh, of this boat. If you've got any questions, um, put them in the chat. And um, if you're watching this after the stream on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe. So uh, let's start the drawing. Okay, so this is 9 inch by 12 inch and it's Saunders and Waterford 140 pound knot, the normal sort of paper I use. I'll just make this a little bit bigger while we're doing the drawing. So you can see. So I'm going to put the horizon slightly above the halfway point. And I'm going to press fairly hard so you can see, but I would advise, you know, if you're doing your drawing, you know, don't, you don't need to press this hard, that uh, it makes it difficult to correct, but obviously I can appreciate that you, it's difficult to see what's going on if I don't press hard enough. So there's a horizon with a water line and then some distant uh, hills here. So now we can put the boat in, which we've got the shape here, which we're gonna have light against, light against dark. So I need to get uh, a nice crisp edge there. And what's quite interesting about this boat that it's obviously in shallow water. So it um, is right on its, tips right on its side. So we'll try to get this as accurate as we can, but uh, it's gonna be a loose water color. So we can get away with quite a bit. So try to get the perspective as good as we can. But uh, if the drawing is tight, the painting will be tight. So I will try and keep it fairly loose. And a lot of it I can actually paint. I don't need to draw all of that in. The boat needs to come out this way a little bit more. So we've got all this interesting which I assume is some kind of fishing uh, fishing gear here. That, uh, we've got some verticals and aerials and all sorts going on here. And so a lot of that will be probably better to paint it rather than try and draw it all in. Maybe just put in the, the main structures And a couple of these boys here. And it comes down there. And then obviously it's sitting in the water, so this is going to have a kind of a, a flat edge there. <coughs> so that's fine. And some bits and bobs in here and you know, a lot of that will just uh, get lost in the painting and then we've got the harbour wall that comes down here which gives us an opportunity to get a nice dark in there and then the water's edge will come around here and then we'll have a nice lead in here and then the reflections will be down here so make sure I've got enough room to get some interesting reflections yeah that should be fine maybe bring the water's edge down here a bit more so I shall rub out any lines I don't want in there because you can't remove them afterwards but I think that's probably enough for the drawing Okay, so let's get some paint. So, let's just move that picture out of the way. So for the um, sort of kind of teal colour on the boat, which I'm going to try to match, that uh, I've got um, two teal colours here, that um, I've got Cobalt Teal by Daniel Smith and 
cobalt turquoise, which is a Rembrandt, um, which are these uh, two here, and there's the turquoise I've got there as well. So we'll see what we can do with those. So I think I could probably do most of this with the Skoda Perla size 14. We'll see how we get on. I managed to put some more paint in my palette, but I tipped the ultramarine blue in the cobalt blue, so I've got a halfway colour there, but it's fine. So I need to make sure I don't go too dark with the sky and try and make it fairly interesting. So we'll get a little bit of warmth in the bottom here. So this is yellow ochre. Actually, it's a raw sienna actually that uh, I have been using yellow ochre for a long time, but I've changed and put some raw sienna in. They're much the same. So there we go. That's enough for the sky. We shall go in with these distant hills. Uh, no I won't, I shall do the water first because I'll put the hills in afterwards. So again I've got to make sure I don't go too dark with the water because the reflections won't, uh, won't work if I do. So the water needs to kind of match the sky. So I shall just use a combination of the, the two the yellow and the, the blue. But I avoid cadmium yellow for jobs like this because I'd have green by now. But um, they don't uh, tend to make green as long as you're fairly careful and don't mess about with them too much. So that's the water. So I will put the uh, sand colour in here which We'll go with a bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre and maybe a bit of crimson and my mix of ultramarine blue and uh, cobalt blue. So it's damp there but it's dry there so I've got a hard edge. So a good mixture of hard and soft edges there. And a hard edge there. So the soft edge will give me the illusion of the wet sand. And then there's my lead in to the to the scene. And I think I will darken this slightly by just mixing a bit of blue onto there. Not that much. I just squeezed out some fresh paint so it was uh, easy to pick up. But uh, let's just put some of that blue on there just to make it a bit more interesting. So now I need to let that dry, but I can work on this area now. So the distant hills will need to be blue to make them look like they're a long way away. So I've got a bit of a grey there, but uh, we'll try that. And the more you can paint in one go, like that, rather than working an area again and again, the better your watercolours will look. So I'm going to cut around the roof of the boat. I'm just going to try and keep it simple. That uh, The simpler you keep these watercolours, the more chance you're going to have of success. And as we're live, I don't want to have any unnecessary mistakes, hopefully. So I shall try and keep it as simple as I can. I'll just throw a little bit of something on here just to make that look a little bit more interesting. That's fine. 
So I might get away without um, actually using the hair dryer. We'll see. Have a quick look at the aura messages. Hi, Pam. No problem. You're welcome. So I shall do the boat, and, uh, and then I shall paint the the wall here. So I'll get a nice sharp edge here, um, because ideally. Uh, we're going to do this after. So you have to plan your watercolours and think about what you're doing. So I think I'll do the wall first here and then I'll let that dry because I do need to have a crisp edge here. So with watercolours and oils as well really that you do kind of need to have a bit of a plan to know what you're doing. So I shall leave a bit of a highlight on the top there which will help describe what's actually there and then carefully paint around the boat. And this is the important part, this nice crisp edge there. And a bit of that cadmium yellow, which will give me a, a green, which might uh, make it look like it's uh, seaweed and whatever else. And we'll leave it a few little bits of white there. So we could maybe paint that reflection while that's wet. So colour wise I'm, I'm just dipping into colours almost sort of randomly just to get the right tone and then I'll just steer it towards the blue or the green whatever I'm looking for but also getting the right consistency of paint which is very important. Um, but I'd like to paint this shadow, or this reflection now, while this is still wet, so it actually connects to the wall above. And then we can really get that to, to stand out the front of the boat. So with reflections, it's best to paint them simply. So I think that's fine for there that we can always uh, add more but you can't take them away. Um, I think what we will do is just put a, uh, a light reflection here in the distance which will kind of make sense of that uh, distant hill. and focus more light here as well. So I think I shall dry that with the hair dryer just to make sure I don't uh, make any mistakes. So, so far we've just painted the backdrop, but uh, we've kept it fairly simple because it's not as important as the, uh, the boat, which is the, uh, what everyone's going to be looking at hopefully. So we'll now focus on getting uh, the boat done, but to try and make it interesting. So let's have a go with this boat. So let's keep area simple where we can so that's just a, a simple wash there that's going to have the, the light on the boat we've got some red on the top of the boat we'll try and 
use the colours that are there. So orange. We'll try some of this teal. So I definitely find the Rembrandt tubes stay wet a lot longer for a lot longer than the Daniel Smith. So I think I prefer using those. So getting a little bit of colour on there. Let's mix up a dark. So just putting some blue into the orange I had there, which gives me a dark. I'm not worried about what colour it is. So we've got an aerial there, another one there, and then it's just things on the boat here. Whoever owns this boat will know that I'm doing it all wrong, but everyone else will think, God, he knows a lot about boats, but I know nothing really about fishing boats. Rigging, just here we are. As long as it's got some uh, verticals and things that look like uh, rigging. So, this is all quite complex here with is this structure on the boat here that's obviously a hoist of some sort for lifting out things. So it's just painting shapes, that's all I'm doing. So a nice dark paint here, because we need the dark here to make the, uh, to make the lights. So. And then there's just bits and bobs in the boat there. And then the windows. some of that up. Just a little bit of detail across the boat here. So let's try and get a bit of warmth on the boat here. Some pencil marks there, but that's all right. So let's have a go with this teal. But, uh, keep it fairly watery. I don't want to go too too dark with it. So it's dried here, so I can get a nice crisp edge there. I don't use this teal a great deal, it's just a little bit wishy-washy. Um, so let's mix a nice dark, which just the burnt amber and the, the blue will do that. Some fairly thick paint. I'll put a little bit of red in there just to make it a little bit more interesting. So I shall need a bit more water. So leave a little bit of a white highlight for the, uh, for the edge of the boat there and paint around those boys because the white paper will help make them appear to be brighter if I paint over them and I'll just leave a, a bit of a gap so I don't uh, mix those uh, colours together and now we can do this reflection. So let's mix up a nice reflection colour. And I find with watercolours that um, quite often I'll just paint the reflection one colour rather than try to get all the uh, different colours in there. But, uh, we'll have a nice dark against light here. 
Maybe that's a little bit too black. So let's put a bit more red in there. Make it more purpley. And try to keep the reflections as simple as we can. And we've got to try and think about what's going on above. So we've got that uh, part there and then the mast. Try to uh, get those to line up. And then that structure there. connect while that's still wet, pull that across here, put some bigger reflections in, yeah. connect that up there and it's got a bit of rope hanging down here, which I'll go and scratch that out, that'll do. So less is more sometimes, so that's one I've got a nice dark colour on. Let's put a couple of seagulls in there. So I think this is a good stage to let it dry. Um, what I will do before it does dry, just take a little bit of tissue and just lift out the reflections there for the, uh, the boys and maybe one there. So I shall let that dry. So just have a quick look at your messages here. Uh, the raising, thank you very much. Um, Pamela, palette is beautiful, thank you. Delphine, amazed how much you can do with that one brush. Yeah, this brush uh, fits everything really, that uh, you can do broad washes and lots of detail. So it's a good brush. And uh, hi Greg, you should recognize this scene. So we've got the background and the foreground and the boat there. It just needs a little bit of detail just to um, give it that little bit more that uh, let's just clean one of those off. So I don't think I've got a great a pink like uh, what's on there so I should just use some of this red so there we go and just a suggestion of color in the reflection there doesn't need any more than that and we've got one there and then we'll have another one which perhaps will have a yellow one Let's have a... so this is pretty much paint straight from the tube so it's going to be a little bit bigger. And we can just suggest a little reflection under there. So thick paint. So if I ever use a neutral tint, I normally add something else to it just to make it a bit more pleasant. So I've just added a little bit of red to it so we can have a bit of detail there 
that rope, a little bit more water on the brush. So yeah, this brush does come to just a single hair at the end, so I can just suggest that bit of rope. And then we've got railing on the front of the boat here. Just a little suggestion there, maybe just a few little lines of detail. touch here and there. And rather than sort of go for putting things in you know real detail, just a little suggestion will do. And the difficulty is knowing when enough is enough. But so uh, this boat is pretty much loaded up with uh, all sorts. Put a bit of clean water down there just to create a bit of a shadow there and just darken those windows a little bit. Uh, maybe a suggestion of a boat in the distance there. Maybe just a little dinghy or two. Just to add a little bit of something to the scene. So I'll just use a little bit of white gouache straight from the tube just to suggest that writing on there, but I'm just going to put a, a couple of marks on there. And just where I've perhaps lost a bit of a highlight. But uh, be careful with gouache that you don't start putting it everywhere. And let's just try a bit of teal with a bit of gouache to make it opaque just to try to make more of those So this is all sort of the stage where you can kind of destroy your painting. So often it's best just to uh, leave it to the following day before you make any rash decisions. But I think maybe just a few little marks here in the sand, just to add a bit of something. And we've got a lead in here, so that's working quite well. So I think uh, we'll call that a day. So let's take the tape off. Take away the reference picture so we're not comparing that it's now a piece of artwork in its own right. So we've got a feel of light here which we've achieved that by having the sky nice and light. If we went too dark with the sky we just wouldn't have the right effect and same with the water here that it's easy to um, you know to paint the, the water almost as dark as the hills and then your reflections won't work or you have to go darker to try to get that contrast. So it's important to keep the water nice and light, keep the sky nice and light. The blue tends to recede, so we've got um, you know, the, the 
the feel of um, distance. Plus these ripples are bigger in the foreground and then they get smaller, so that also gives the illusion of um, distance. And anything in the distance, you don't need any detail that um, there's caravans and houses and all sorts on this hill, but I haven't painted any of them. I've just left a bit of white paper in places, that's all you need. And a couple of boats there tied up or you know, moored or wherever. And the jetty here, no detail in there really, just a little suggestion of the green moss or weeds or whatever growing up there, that's all it needs. And at the foreground here, that uh, it's this dark that makes this look like it's water. So um, that's important. And then we've got a lead in here. That, so your eye kind of comes into the page here and we're kind of trapped here, hopefully, with, with the area of light. So uh, I think that's worked quite well. Another comment there, I'm impressed with the confidence of your brushwork, an area I need to practice. Yeah, that uh, practice makes perfect, that um, I've done a lot of paintings this week, well I've done a lot of paintings over the last 20 years or so, but uh, this week um, I've added onto my Patreon page a few new paintings. This was Aberyst with Pier, another one you'll know Greg. And Another one here, that uh, this was in uh, the south of France, that um, I ended up putting a wash over this area just to soften it a little bit, gave it kind of an evening glow. And uh, here's one from our Saturday challenge, um, which if you um, look on my YouTube videos, in the link in the description is a um, link to go to a Facebook group where you can share your work, that we have a Saturday challenge. I ended up having to paint it twice because I forgot to press record on that one. So uh, plenty of practice. And I've been posting a little bit less on YouTube to try to increase my views. And it's actually worked that uh, I was posting daily on YouTube and my figures were kind of just hovering around the sort of 500 views per video. Um, but by now only posting once, twice, maybe three times a week, um, this demo actually went up to 5,000 views. So. Don't ask me how it all works, but um, it does work. So, but I'm still posting pretty much daily on Patreon, so have a look at that if you want You know, lots and lots of demos, and I've got hundreds of videos on there. And here's a couple of paintings I've added to the beginner videos on my Patreon page. Uh, this one is Aberarth in Wales, so quite a simple but quite effective seascape. And Another one from Wales. I used to live in Wales, where I've got uh, some reference pictures. This is Porthgain Harbour. And again, a good opportunity to practice these ripples and, and so on. So uh, look out for those if you're on Patreon. So let's have a go at this bar now. So this is the, uh, the other painting we're going to have a go at. Hi Chris, and Barn Kitchen Basics, yes I do make it look easy but I do have my failures as well sometimes but hopefully not on uh, an evening where we're doing a live stream. So I shall set up the paper for this bar now. So we'll need a bit of a bit more accuracy in the, the drawing here. So let's get the right reference picture sorted. Make that a little bit bigger. I've painted a few barn owls over the years that uh, are a good subject for watercolour, I think, because of the, the light. Hi, Krista. Yeah, hopefully this owl will be a, a success. We'll give it a go. So I'm using a uh, tablet to uh, paint, well, use it as my reference picture. So uh, get that in the right place. 
So we'll have the owl flying just slightly above halfway, I think. So let's get his head in first. So that's the kind of important part because that's what we're going to be looking at. So I'll just first of all, just make sure I can get him to fit on the page because I don't want to lose some of his wings. So I think we'll be okay with that. So obviously the heart shape is what we all know to be a bar now. So we'll try and get that as good as we can. So I'll press soft to start with on this, but then I'll press slightly harder once I'm confident I've got the right mark. So there's his heart shape there. And I think the eyes actually appear halfway that some people tend to put them too high up. But um, we'll put that center line down there, which will help us. And then the eyes. So it's, we need to get this bit right. So lots of concentration. The wings we can get away with, but uh, the face needs to be good. So that's fine, that's looking okay. If it looks like a barn out, we should be okay. And then the head, body, and then it comes down here. And we need to make a note of where the shadow is, because that's quite important. And we'll need to make sure that stays white paper because if I have to resort to you trying to use gouache it just won't look good but um, gouache is okay for the odd highlight but uh, if you try and paint with it it's not going to be good in a watercolour obviously if you're doing a gouache painting it's a different story as a medium it's uh, great so there's his tail We've got quite a nice sort of flowing shape across his back here. So let's go and get that looking good. So I think that's okay. So let's just get rid of some of these lines that we don't want. So the plan is to paint the, uh, the barn owl first and then I'll paint the background afterwards. So, same a lot of colours. I will just clean out a couple of these just a little bit. So, we'll start with a bit of a bit of blue. So we'll, we've got uh, cool and uh, warm on this uh, bar now. But uh, obviously, we're not going to use white paint, but. Um, we can just paint the shadows and create the illusion of, uh, it's all very delicate, this, this part here, so hopefully you can see okay. So this is the, the area that's in shadow. And this will all make sense when I put the background in. But, uh, And I try not to uh, paint it too perfectly. Let's uh, try and keep it a little bit loose, which will help to the 
create the illusion that it's actually flying. Wet into wet here just to create the the right softness here. That uh, this eye is going to have less focus than the other one. So I'm hardly using any paint. It's uh, mainly being done with the uh, the water. make sure I just retain that white there. So let's use some burnt sienna. So I think it'll be a good colour for the uh, the brown. So there's a little bit around his eye and on the beak there and there's actually a little bit around that eye as well. So it's all very uh, very delicate. So again, cleaned my brush off with just clean water. Create that softness. Let it mix on the paper. So let's have a, a rest from his face. Let's do this heart shape. So just clean water and just soften that. So that if I go too dark with this, it just won't work because I need the, the light on the owl for the, uh, so when I put the dark background in, it will really make it uh, pop like it does in the photo. And it's a little bit Darker there. And now you need to just suggest some areas of detail. But, uh, if we get a good enough shape, we'll know it's a, an owl. Uh, a bit more of that blue. shape of the nose. So I think that's fine. So just a little bit of detail on the, on the top of his head. So the underside of his body is in shadow. So more of that blue, maybe a touch of the red. But again, I don't want to go too dark with it. So again, I kind of the technique I do is I put the watercolour down and then I'll use just water to manipulate it to where I want it to go. So more burnt sienna under there and I need to be fairly quick about it because I want to mix on the paper. Just need to lift a little bit off there with some tissue and it's quite a bit darker under there. And if you can let it paint itself like that, even better. But so sometimes you've got to uh, just move, move it about with the, the brush. And he's obviously got his feet tucked up underneath. Soften that with some water and maybe
maybe a little bit of blue. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to be painting detailed wings. I'm just going to suggest something there. And I've got a dark under that wing. Again, just use some clean water. Just soften that. But it's important that I keep the area of light on the on the wing there. And a bit of burnt sienna, and then just so I need to make sure that's dry, and then we can put the background in, and then we'll just check to see whether we need to do any more details that um, I think we could probably get away with just sharpening up this eye a little bit. Keep a bit of the white paper for his highlight. More of that burnt sienna there. Careful not to uh, start fiddling. Just help define that shape of his nose. But uh, it's quite nice to have the soft softness rather than hard edges everywhere. But um, need to make sure that eyes the same sort of size. So let's have a go at doing the background. This is all pretty dried. So we can go to a slightly bigger brush and we want to try and get this dark straight off with the right uh, mix. But uh, if we have to go over it again, it just won't have the same effect. So let's just mix plenty of colours in there. Just keep going until I get the right consistency. So I think I'll just pop a little bit of water along the top there. All right, so nice and dark. So I get to reload the brush. So I can always take these white areas away. But um, if they're there, we might better use them. Let's see. So this is where you've got to be careful to cut around the top of the owl. And you've got to be fairly quick because you don't want to for this to dry out and uh, Get a hard edge. So down we go. So I'm not going to be worrying too much about if I haven't got the end of the the wings perfect or the bits of detail. 
let's just try and get it as good as I can before it dries. I think we use the smaller brush to go around, around his head. Typical, put a little drop of uh, something on his uh, eye there. Well, don't worry about it. And maybe leave a little bit of a white highlight or two underneath to suggest so let's try to keep it wet where it needs to, because otherwise I'm going to end up with a, a hard edge. So, back to the bigger brush. It, um, and you can always give it a little spray, maybe just to Give yourself a bit more time. So, do I just carry on the uh, the wash underneath? The same colour, or what can we do with that? Let's try just put some water on it and see what uh, happens. What we could do, I've got my natural sponge here. See if we can just soften, create a little bit of something in here. As long as I don't. Uh, mess about when it's dried, we should be okay. That uh, we've got time to uh, play about while it's still wet. I'd quite like to get a little bit of softness on these wings, but uh, it kind of looks like it's stuck on at the moment. The, so let's just paint up into there. Let's add connection. Same with the body. I think if we darken that a little bit, paint it into the, uh, the background. Let's try that. So this is just trying to add connection. But, uh, I think what we need are some trees, it's swooping down onto some trees maybe. Very nice, thick paint. These are the tops of trees. Branches in. I'm 
we'll do some of this wet into wet and then some of it while it's uh, dried. So a few branches. So we leave a bit of an opening for the, uh, the eye to travel. Take them up through. Take my sponge again and just soften some of those areas. Always, if you're using a natural sponge, just make sure you always clean it off after every time you've used it. This um, Saunders and Waterford 140 pound paper, it's very resilient, it can take a good bashing. So there's a bit of light being created there. Not too much, create some swirls. Right, I think it's a good idea to uh, give it a little spray and then let it dry. So the only thing I think I need to do to it is just darken this side of the face that um, give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look to the to the scene. So I should just use a bit of that blue and some of the background colour just to keep it in harmony. Do it. A little dark there. I tried to uh, save the white paper for the uh, highlight on his eye, but uh, we can just put a little bit of white gouache. And maybe just a, a little flick to suggest feathers.
that's uh, all we need so keep going and then spoil the uh, freshness of it so let's uh, again remove the uh, the image let's just take that tape off Okay, thanks Greg. Um, Pamela, I agree. The treetops make it look like it's flying through. Yeah, that's kind of was the idea that um, give it um, a little bit of a bit of a story. That um, yeah, no, I suppose you could put a, wi a leaf coming across the wing to make it look like it's coming through. That um, that would possibly work, Pam. Uh, thanks, Krista. But uh, yeah, an example that you don't have to follow the reference photo that um, you know, obviously we've fo followed the bird fairly closely, but uh, the background we've uh, kind of changed a little bit, well quite a bit, um, just to make it simplified. But um, you know, by adding these little marks in here of a suggestion of trees that um, it, uh, obviously the, the photo is kind of, the background is very blurred and it's focused on the uh, the bird but obviously if we were seeing the scene with our eyes you know we wouldn't see it like a camera we would see it as our eyes see it so we would uh, you know take in more detail possibly so uh, there you go hopefully you enjoyed that and thanks for joining me i appreciate that but um switch over to the camera uh, yeah so thanks for joining me again on this live stream that uh, it's good fun painting live it puts a bit of pressure on so uh, and it's really great that um you're here watching it as well with your comments. Um, we've got a workshop for watercolours coming up on the 16th of December. Um, I know Chris and Greg are on that one and I think we've got a couple of other people as well. So uh, if you're interested in painting on a workshop with me, that I go a little bit further into the process of showing you how I prepare for a painting. That uh, With these scenes, I've kind of worked them out in my head how I'm gonna paint them. But uh, certainly on the workshop, I'll put it down on paper so you can sort of see my thought process. Um, so uh, again, say thanks for our patrons that uh, really appreciate the support you give me on my Patreon page and I uh, appreciate all the likes and comments on YouTube as well. So we'll just have a quick look at the paintings again. So there was the first one, the, the boat. That I was quite pleased with the water on there, that uh, that worked quite well. Um, so it's certainly a scene I'd happily paint again, that you could keep going with that. And same with the bar now, you could paint this many times and experiment with different backgrounds. So I'll get these um, edited for a patron that um, they'll be available to watch the live stream on YouTube. So, uh, but I tend to go through and edit them and uh, make them a little bit more enjoyable for, for viewing. So you're not um, listening to me rambling on too much. So uh, I shall s probably have a video on YouTube at the weekend and again, most days on Patreon. And um, I should hopefully be live next Thursday, but I shall let you know. So again, thanks for joining me. I'll just quickly check the messages. Hi Ken, no problem. And glad that you got something from it, Pam. And uh, I shall see you next time on the next video. So bye for now.